Hi, I'm Maria Pagosi, and welcome to Cowboy Chats. We're going to introduce you to some modern day cowboys. With Kelly Whalen on another episode of Cowboy Chats. I'm Charlie St. Andrews, and this is my wild pony. Forrest Gump. He didn't like that. He did Casey do just fine. Who do you think makes a cowboy? Who do you think? What do you think when someone says cowboy or that's cowboy or you know it, it's kind of funny because I mean I've worked on ranches a little bit down on red where we do a lot of day help, yep. especially Brandon's uh, in the spring and then use their fall gatherings and stuff. But uh, there's a lot of differences because there's the rodeo cowboy. Yep. There's the guy, the buckaroo, yes, you know, sir. and then there's, you know, house, horse trainers, they're cowboys too. It's just kind of their deal. Uh, I personally tend to go the California buckaroo style. I'm not a buckaroo by any means, but I'm, that's the kind of stuff we do. I mean, I use a 60 foot rope and, yes, and stuff like that. You know, I mean, uh, much, cause we lived a mile up the road in subdivision when I was growing up as a kid. Yes, and, uh, about five years old, I wanted to be a cowboy. I mean, I was dead sent, and a lot of it had to do with Roy Rogers, but I had to be a cowboy. And my uh, Roy who? I only know Buck Rogers, who's Roy Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, my dad bought me a horse at six, and he wasn't broke. But between, and he'd never been, uh, I think that same year, he put me on a calf out there at the farm only. We didn't know what he was doing. I mean, he, we got him roped, and. Uh, he never even tightened my rope. I had put a rope around him. He never even tightened it. And the son of a gun, one jump, bucked me up. I hit a rock, broke my nose, blocked both my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> my mom was going to kill him, but it just kind of, you know, uh, I kept, they used to have a little deal around here. They used to call uh, Little Buckaroo Rodeos, and I'd go to them. And growing up until I said I kind of got into high school. And I, at the time, I was riding in galloping racehorses, even at that, till about, okay. till I was about 14, 15 years old, and kind of started graduating the road. I always had practice horses. So do you think, they think, you know, cowboy well, has to be born on a ranch, right, works on a ranch, all that. What do, you, what do you feel like, though, that, like, cowboy can sometimes just be a spirit it's just a oh yeah it's just something in your heart it's just something you, you know, don't matter if you live in the inner city or anywhere else like it's just a way of life and a way of thinking and a way of being it's kind of spirit not I, I, necessarily you know you're being well you gotta I, be you gotta be a buckaroo or a rodeo well, cowboy they're, they're, or you know I, there's a lot of cowboy values and they're still there. Even with the times we're in now, they're still cowboy values. Yes, sir. And uh, I'm a firm believer in that. And mm -hmm. I mean, it's a yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a firm believer in the way cowboys are. I said, in our times nowadays, it's it, we need more cowboys, you yeah. know. But yeah. when you go back to the, uh, like in the inner city or something, happens all the time. So I got a good buddy, Charlie Sampson, and he was raised racing Watts. Yep. And and uh, so oh, and I mean and he's he's pretty into the rodeo thing. Like yep. he just he just type, called me a couple of weeks ago. He's been in Cody all all winter or all mm -hmm. summer. Mm -hmm. uh, working on a dude ranch up there. Really? <laughs> he's 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 worked for this guy. He probably go end up in Arizona the winter. But yeah, I keep in touch with him quite a bit. That's really cool. With him in '83, him and no Ted. Kid. Yeah, all summer long. Ted, Noose. Noose. Huh? He's in Texas right now. Yeah, yeah. I'll be down. Yeah, I like I say back in them days, I could just about knew everybody. Good egg, man. Yeah, I traveled with them guys in '83 when I was trying to make the finals. I'll be darned, that's right around when Ted won his world championship. Uh, it was a year after Charlie, and I think Ted was two years later. Yeah, 80, that's what I thought. 85, yeah. 85. Yeah. yeah, 85, was 85, because I cried, I got up 86. Yeah, it, it, I mean, like I said, it was really, it was a good opportunity for, for me. Really good opportunity. That's amazing. Because they 
buddy together. I got a lot more strung out because I wasn't buddying with Well, because you weren't on the road all the time. No, right? I was on the road full time. Oh, you were? Yeah. Yeah, I was on the road full time that year. Uh, yeah, you could just have two people could buddy together. Well, yeah. I was still traveling with them. And they were entering me, but I was always getting screwed up on the dates, you know. I mean, yeah, yeah. We had our own plane at the end of June and most of July that we were we had leased, and it was kind of bad because Charlie he won the world the year before, so he had a free airplane ticket with Frontier. Me and Ted were trying to keep up with him, and yeah, they, you know, so we yeah. were going. Yeah. You know, and like I said, we we uh, I spent a lot of money. But that's what you had to do. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's, I mean, because I think I you entered. your own plane. You're, yeah. You're off. You're off. Because I think I entered 170 rodeos that year. I didn't get to all of them, but I entered 170 rodeos. To go to the uh, uh, Cow Palace. Yeah. And Guys, I didn't actually. Was at the Cow Palace. I even actually made a man in school garden from one time. Uh, that's something. Uh, the Wilderness Circuit, I won it three times. Second, and then a bunch of seconds in the Wilderness Circuit. A few of my favorite rodeos that I won a lot of money at, like San Antonio, I used to do really good there. Okay. Houston, I won a bunch of money. I won money at Cheyenne. Not winning first, but I can go around. But I won a bunch of money there. Uh, Napa was always my good rodeo. Napa, yeah. Napa and Caldwell. Yeah. Uh, Reno. I won Reno. Yeah, Reno's fun. I, I, I ran Re <clears throat> Reno one year, but it was before it was as big a rodeo as it is now. Oh, yeah. They didn't have a short round. Oh, okay. And I, and it was, I think it was a year before they started giving the Spurs away, which made me mad. I had actually ended up coming back and winning around. I think the next year we got bucked off in the short round. The same bull bucked me off in Denver. Okay. I mean, oh, yeah. He was a bucker. A lot of adventure. Lived a pretty full life. See, back then, Dwayne Hargo. Yeah. Dwayne Hargo was, was going good. Yeah. Uh, of course, Mom Burger. Um, who else was it? Well, I was fighting bulls. Well, uh, oh, crap. Uh, Wayne's a good example. Yeah, uh, well, Wickpath. Wick, Wickpath. An inner, an inner city kid. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Wickpath. Uh, I don't know what was on the kid. I'm a terrible show. Them. Yeah. It's hard to remember everybody. I know Roe Cheatman was somewhere around in there, too, but maybe. He was a little bit late. Yeah, he was a little bit later. Closer to me. creeping into the 90s. Yeah. Yeah, he was a little bit later. I mean, uh, Lane well, Frost. I there, so yeah. Well, when Lane, he, Lane Frost was kind of a rookie when, while I was still going. Yeah, because he didn't get killed till 89, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, and I was actually, I actually decided to come back with riding racehorses in, when I was 40, which would have been 87, something like that. I on 40 bulls that year. Holy I never God. rode a bull other than at Epic. They used to have a little series there. God. <laughs> That's the only place, and I actually won a saddle riding bulls. My wife talked me into getting on a bareback horse when you all-around saddle, and I, so I got on one right before I was going to cast for the horse races. And ended up winning the all-around saddle. Ride bulls a little longer. Yeah. I wouldn't have, I'd, I'd, I'd have given it another shot to make the finals. The year I tried to make it, it boiled down to three bulls. I rode them seven and a half seconds. If I'd have rode one of them, if I'd have rode the, uh, the short round bull in Houston, which I rode about seven and a half seconds, I'd have, that, I would have made nine thousand dollars. That was back in the eighties. That was a lot of money. That's a lot. It's a ton of money. In yeah, there. and I, and, he, and, he, and, it's, and it was one I should have rode. Uh, Dave Appleton, he come up to me, he says, "I can't believe I'm kind of choked. I got tense because I'd never been in that position. I right. Mean, I, I, I'd won, you know. I think I ended up winning about four thousand that year, but I got bucked off that short round bull." And the same thing happened uh, at Albuquerque, which was at the end of the season. I was still, I would have just stayed on still that one. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I think it was a lot, it was pressure for me because it's what I wanted to do my whole life. Right. I made the finals. Right. If I had just on a couple of them, I mean, they were good enough to win money. I mean, plenty of money on. Mm -hmm. And I just couldn't quite make a, you know, seven, seven. And, and like I said, it was a couple of my just tense. You know, that last six seconds, I just 
I was like, I'm just getting wrong. I just kind of tense up a little bit. Just tied, instead of riding the way I did, lose whatever it is. You know, Donnie Gay wins eight. So, you know, Tyler, Donnie Gay Tyler, Tyler, he wins or yeah. say like, uh, you know, in your, in your. Well, in my experience with Donnie Gay, he out rodeo us all. He could dang sure ride. Don't get me wrong. He could ride. But there was, personally, I thought guys rode as good, maybe better. But uh, you can out rodeo him. That guy, I mean, he knew how to rodeo and he rodeo hard. Uh, but that I thought, like Randy Majors, I thought he, there's a lot of them that, that rode good enough to make the finals, but they just didn't quite do it. Donnie Davis, to me, he was the best bull rider ever. There, that's, how, that's how I feel. But you know, a I mean, lot of people, and it wasn't just a bull. For, for whatever reason, whether they just don't like him or whatever it is, he never gets yeah brought up or talked about ever. Yeah, you know, I, I know. <laughs> and I, I was around him a lot, too. And it was kind of funny. Donnie, when he'd come up in this country, he'd always call me, okay, what's this bull, what's this bull? Because I was kind of the rep for uh, Kirby's. And uh, he'd always call me, and I'd, you know, feel like being, and so then he might fly in. But it was funny. He was kind of arrogant with me up here, but I'd get to Texas, and I was a little brother. It did me so good. Sure. Like, you know? Sure. Matter of the one of the best bull rides I've ever seen was at the Salt Palace that he made. Doug Brown was 91 and he was 95. And oh. and I mean this bull buck. Matter of the bull bucked me off at West Jordan. Threw me up as high as announcer stands. <laughs> 278 of Kirby's. He was a bucker. And Donnie rode him. And I said, I still think that was one of the best rides I've ever seen. Because that was different. They scored a little lower. I mean, you'd, you'd win checks with 70-something points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it was just different. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah, there wasn't going to be a lot of 100, yeah. 100 point bull rides back then. Now, you get 80s and 90s yeah. scores a lot. I mean, almost all the time. Everywhere, yeah. yeah. But there are a bit better bulls. Too. So, that was that was something that, it's always been my personal opinion, that a lot of times, a world champion isn't necessarily the best at that. He maybe has more money or more family money pushing <clears throat> him to be able to go to more rodeos. I'm not saying that they're not good or they're not, putting work in or or really good at what they're at there's been some times where there's guys that were probably better but they just had the money or the ability oh, to yeah. go to all the rodeos yeah oh yeah i mean because I, I grew up with kids that i promise you could outride world champion bronc riders but they don't have the money or, the or they just to go don't have anything or they didn't want it yeah they just had the desire to and not and, but not having the desire is different than not having the opportunity yeah yeah there's 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 a lot that just don't have that opportunity. Yeah, you know, and a lot of people say, "Well, you gotta you know, make your opportunity." You well, and, and, and you know what? Been done in some cases. But and and, and there's <clears> a lot <throat> lot to that because there's a lot of people that ride super good, but rodeo is not. To they have responsibilities doing something else, ranching, or sure. whatever. Yeah. So they're just part time, you know. And, and that's the way. I, that's basically how I was a lot too. And then, like I said, I did try to make the finals that one year, and the year before I did pretty good, so I had enough money to kind of carry it through. Didn't go to that, you know, I probably went to 50, 60 rodeos, but so that was next year, plus I did really good at the winter rodeos. I mean, I won money at every winter rodeo that year, and quite a bit. So I got, I was in ninth or 10th when the rodeos were over. Uh, so that made it, so I could go. I mean, because we didn't have any money, you know. No, I, 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 you know, my dad, he worked for the post office, and, you know, I was fortunate to what I had, especially like this little Back guy. then, when it, it was it still the same? I took 15 to the NFR. Yeah. 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 I was the top 25. But I rode both, both my boys. Right. right. Well, and that's the, a lot of things people don't understand, and you can touch on it, but sometimes, too, you know, that's... Just the luck of the draw. Yeah, you just you know? yeah, and, 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 and there's almost everybody has that. Half the score is the bull, half the score is the right. Yeah. And almost everybody has that happen to them. For oh, a while. of course. You sure. know what I mean? I, mean sure. I don't care whether they're done any any of them guys. They have that. You go in through slumps. You do. You go through slumps. And, so, and, 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 and to be honest, you know, I mean, I because I know I remember the story when I was there. I mean, I was 14 or 18 years old, so here I am, this little little guy. I heard him. And I don't know whether that fired me up to write him, but Marvin Paul just looked and says, Who's got they used to call him the big white well? He says, Who's got him? I said, Oh, just some little kid. That I mean that 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 one ride probably really helped my career. 
Because, I mean, yeah, granted, sometimes you would get screwed, but there's a thing you do. It's and all, I never it's even all paying your dues thing, right? Yeah, like yeah it's what, all paying your dues. That's what they would say to me. Well, you pay your dues, you know, you got to ride for whatever. Yeah. But like I said, I started out pretty young on my career with that. Just like I said, because this guy rode that one bow. And then all of a sudden, you know, I started riding some little bit, you know, ranker bulls, and everybody kind of knew that mm -hmm. I was that I was there. And there was a lot of guys like that. Denny Flynn was great. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the last year he made the finals, he only got on 15 bulls. Wow. And he won the average at the finals. Wow. A friend that's a bronc rider that was kind of the same way, Joe Marvel. I mean, finals. He won the world. And Joe Marvel, those marvels out of... Uh, Mount 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 but you know what? He don't yeah. get injured. He's probably got Donnie Gage record. Yeah. Uh, no sweat. I, I've been watching him on TV because we got the Cowboy Channel, and uh, he struggled since he came back. He just kind of struggled. I mean, he's not dominating. You can see it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> God, this is terrible. I know. It is. So, open now. Uh, ever since I quit riding, I was always, I always liked, loved to team rope, but I didn't have time with the race horses. The only time I could rope was really in the winter, because the race horses, no yeah. Rope in Utah, really. I mean, yeah. Well, indoor, but. And we, oh, there's so many indoor arenas. Yeah. You, you can rope around here every week. And then, like I said, I'll practice. I kind of backed off a little bit this year, because I really went anywhere to go. But I, I. Do you head or heel or both or whatever? What? Or do you head or heel? I, I, I. Or which do you prefer? I prefer heading. Yeah. Uh, I a few years ago I did really good at the World Series he healing. Mm -hmm. I got so frustrated that I said, you know what, I'm just gonna go ahead. Yeah. I'd come out here and talk with Mr. Whalen and it's been a good time. He's been around quite a while, but he's still twenty nine. Thank you for watching Cowboy Chats. Please subscribe so you can meet all of our modern day cowboys. Thank you.